Um, I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, I did bring a, a, an external microphone, but just realised my new iPhone doesn't have a microphone jack, which is a bit silly of me not to check that before we came out, but never mind. Uh, this morning I'm out in my local woodland again, uh, and the uh, aim this morning is to photograph these lovely snowdrops that you can see behind me. Now this woodland um, has quite a few groups of uh, snowdrops, but not all of them are in uh, really accessible places uh, and in places that will photograph very well. Um, some of them are sort of tucked in uh, lots of vegetation, they're very messy, there's no real uh, light, uh, decent light that gets to them. Uh, and as you will see that coming up behind me now um, is the sun. Um, and in about half an hour that's hopefully going to backlight these snowdrops really beautifully, uh, which will give me the opportunity not only to, to photograph them with that light behind them, but perhaps I can uh, move around and actually take some with the sun behind me uh, for sort of, I don't know, identification portraits as well. But Really, my photography's taken a, uh, an artistic route over the last few years, uh, and I've taken plenty of photographs in the past of, of, of this species uh, that could be used in ID books, for example. That's not what I want to do anymore. I want to be producing things that people can put on their wall, um, uh, you know, as, as works of art. So that's really the aim today. Um, and in a minute, I'll, uh, I'll show you exactly what I've got in my bag uh, in terms of the lens choices that I've made today. Uh, I've, I've got a, a variety of lenses with me, which is unusual for me. Normally, I'm I can, sorry, I can I can hear a tree creeper in the background, um, which is unusual for me because uh, normally I just come out with one camera and one lens. But uh, I've decided that I'm I'm going to shoot a lot locally this year, um, and with the snowdrops, I wanted a few choices this morning, particularly as as we've got a pretty rare cold and frosty morning uh, and the forecast isn't great for the next few days um, certainly a few fronts coming in so it's going to be cloudy and wet um, and now I can hear a goshawk calling <laughs> sorry uh, there's a pair in this woodland um, and they'll be displaying at this time of the year so maybe I'll have a look for them later but uh, anyway I'll show you what's in the kit bag uh, in a minute uh, so here I am that you can see the sun's starting to come up um, behind me and the good thing about this location is that um, these snowdrops on a, on, a, on a bank, which means that they're free of clutter behind them. And that's really important when you're trying to take um, sort of clean artistic shots. And we'll, we'll get to showing you some of that through the camera uh, a little later on. But I thought I'd share with you the lenses and the, and the, and the kit that I brought with me. Um, so the first choice is a good old trusty uh, sort of 105 macro. Um, and that's really uh, great for sort of shallow depth of field, getting in really close. And we'll look at some of the techniques that, uh, that I'll, I'll use later. Uh, the next is I've brought with me the 24 to 70, uh, simply because I've seen another uh, location, which is just over the other side of this central ride through the wood, um, which looks quite good for, um, you know, a wider angle shot um, of, of the plants in their habitat. So. Uh, I brought a polarizer with me as well because there's some lovely green mosses that uh, that, that might be able to, to uh, saturate the colours for a, a little bit more. Plus there's a fair bit of moisture around and that always helps with a polarizer. Uh, a good bit of kit to keep in your kit bag with you at all times is a, is a, is a polarizing filter, so remember that one. Um, and the next lens actually might surprise you a little bit, um, but it's my 200 to 500 um, f5.6, which I normally uh, reserve for birds and, and wildlife where I want that, um, want that range of uh, focal lengths. Uh, but actually it's really good for plants as well. You can't get that close, but what you can do is look at the element on the front of that lens, it's huge. So it gives you a lot of real estate to put uh, things like out of focus vegetation in the way to give you that sort of dreamy feel. And again, I'll show you a little bit of how that works later. Anyway, shall we get on and, and take some pictures because that sun's coming up and I'm gonna get ready. So I just thought I would show you um, through the uh, mo through my phone's lens, uh, basically the sort of groups that I'm, I'm going to be photographing. But you can see how, being on this ridge, that there are plenty of groups that are, are quite sort of free of clutter. Uh, and what I'll do is is sort of put the uh, lens, the macro lens, sort of straight in in here and look for. Um, one particular plant that I can focus on and the rest of these plants will, will, will come out of focus and create a sort of dreamy effect and with that sun coming up behind them hopefully I'll get some really really beautiful backlight um, but I'll, I'll try and show you 
that effect by videoing a, a section through uh, the macro to, to show you what my camera is seeing, uh, you know, and how we go about it. It's quite tricky, you know, to pick out an individual plant. Um, you have to look around, you know, quite carefully, but it can create some really beautiful effects. So, you know, I'll, I'll try and demonstrate that through a bit of video footage through taken through the macro lens to show you what my, my camera is seeing and, and how I'm trying to compose the shot. Now all the time I'm looking through the viewfinder here uh, is I'm searching for uh, a composition by moving the camera around. And what I'm really looking for is to frame an individual plant by some of those sort of out of focus elements that you can see coming and going. And it's only when you uh, really look through the viewfinder uh, and twist uh, the focusing ring and move the camera around that you those compositions really um, start sort of uh, appearing in front of your eyes uh, in the viewfinder. So it's important to you know, get low, get close uh, and just move around and see what you can find. So I don't know how well you can see on the screen because um, obviously it's quite a high contrast uh, scene behind me but you can see the sun's coming up and you see how it's casting these shafts of light in between these trees here. Um, now that basically is meaning that the scene is changing constantly and I'm constantly looking for new compositions as that sun you know, move, moves around and lights different plants and goes behind the trunks of those trees and the branches and then casts a shadow. So it's picking out those plants quite nicely, um, but you have to work quite quickly and, and, and get a, a composition quite quickly. So it's quite tricky, but some lovely lighting conditions if you get it right. And I've stuck to the macro um, for that reason, just to if you keep changing lenses, um, then it becomes a little bit more difficult, I think, to, to find a pleasing composition. And you're losing that time as well, uh, you know, where the sun might be illuminating something really nicely. So I've concentrated on the, on the macro lens for the time being. You know, as I said, there is another shot that I want to get with the 24 to 70, um, I think, behind me on the other side of the, uh, on the, other side of the ride. Um, but as I said, you can see how that sun's playing uh, on, those, on those plants. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a beautiful situation to have, um, you know, because you've got shade, you've got brightly backlit plants, so you've got contrast. And where you've got contrast, you can create some really sort of quite artistic shots. It gives you plenty of scope. And that's what I tend to look for in my photography these days, um, is, is areas where I've got that contrast uh, and I can use it to create uh, artistic images. So as you can see, I, well, I think you can see that the light behind me is changing all the time, as I said earlier. Um, but it, this is all about experimentation. Um, and I like the macro approach. I like that sort of getting in close, as you saw me do earlier, sticking the lens right into the plants. I mean, obviously, you've got to be careful not to crush them. I mean, that's, that's, that's the difficulty. And picking out a single plant to focus on without too many distracting elements around it and it, it's all quite tricky so it's not as easy as it as it looks but you know it's all about photography is all about experimentation and just trying new things and it, uh, hopefully these videos will help you, um, you know, pick up on some of these ideas and, and encourage you to go out and try them for yourselves and that's what this is all about really uh, but as I said I, I like it wide open apertures um, backlit subjects, sticking the camera right into the group and trying to create, if you think about trying to create a window through which to see your subject, you're trying to frame it in a different way. I'm trying to frame things without a focus elements and it creates all these sort of lovely uh, patches of colour and texture depending on what you've got in front of the lens. So uh, do go out and experiment. I hope you've really enjoyed this. I'll put some pictures up that I've taken this morning and over previous previous mornings this year, um, hopefully to encourage you um, and show you what's possible. But go out and experiment. Uh, try these things for yourself and you never know, you may surprise yourself. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, don't forget that if you really like the video, uh, then please subscribe to the channel. Um, hit that bell icon, which will give you notifications of new videos as and when they, uh, as and when they are posted. Um, obviously we've got a load of li uh, live events as well, um, so you'll get notifications of that. Um, put some comments 
uh, in down below because that all helps plus uh, give us a thumbs up because all those things help the YouTube algorithm find us and, uh, and broadcast it to a wider audience so uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you again another time